Ah, there we go. Sound. Sound check. Satnam, beautiful friends, and welcome to my little party. And welcome to the final energy shift of 2022, which began on Saturday the 10th when the full moon came rolling in. And as predicted, the Earth's plates are shifting. And the quakes that I predicted previously that would hit the Pacific near Papua New Guinea and another in China and Iceland all just occurred. What does this mean? Where are the next quakes going to hit? That much more today. Did you know in Oak Glen, California, they experienced one of the predicted mudslides that I said would happen in California. Is there more to come? Of course there is. And I have a dire warning for our friends in California today. Stay tuned for that. Another elite oligarch dies. As predicted, this time falling off a high-speed boat, boat instead of falling out of a window like others. Who will be the next target? Stick around. We're going to talk about that today, too. More things are showing up as waters are beginning to recede from all these droughts. What will show up next and what did just recently show up, I'm going to tell you about today, too. Perhaps an ancient structure that's going to show up in the near future? Stay tuned to find out more predictions revolved around this. I also predict that major strikes are coming. Major railroad workers are battling over new contracts. Will they go on strike? Who else may go on strike? How does this align with their plans to starve us out this winter? Huh, practically all the stocks just dropped. Where are the markets heading? This and a whole lot more on this edition of Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time, episode number 32. I got my tea and my nice new mug on my nice new warmer. Yeah, we should um, rock and roll today. So uh, welcome, everybody, to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joseph Tittle, a.k.a. Spirit Man JT. I got to turn off that doorbell. There we go. Now, welcome you again. Thank you for hanging out on me. Today is September 13th here in Sedona, Arizona, where it is gloomy and rainy today, which is good. We need it very, very much, very much so. Um, if you're new to the channel, and even if you are been to the channel for a while, check your notifications. Hit that subscribe button, that bell, followed by all to ensure that you get notifications. It's always a great idea to click that like button along the lines, too, because I love all of you and deserve a little like. But that also changes the algorithms to make sure that my stuff shows up on your feed. And I'm here every Tuesday. So when I'm not, then you know something must be off. But I'm here every Tuesday, this approximate time. So join me. Next Tuesday is up in the air. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. But also down below, you'll find all the links to all my social media, including the Awaken Your Spirit community on Subscribestar. And I thank all of you for the love and support that you bring to me in the ways that you bring it. I couldn't do this without your love and support. Also down below, you'll find the link to my newsletter. Um, you're going to want to sign up for that newsletter. I'll be sending out a new one probably in the next couple of days with, with a link to all the classes I have coming up this fall season. If you want to learn to dabble in divination, tarot cards, tea leaves, and a whole bunch of other stuff, I have a course in divination. And then I have my Spirit Speaks Master Class, which is a more serious class in which you must dedicate yourself to being physically there every week. And that launches in October. And that will help you to connect with your guides, angels, and spirit allies and journey into the realms and with your spirits. It's a great class, it's a ceremony, awesome stuff. Thank you, Sandra, for your PayPal um, support. I love you lots. So today's topics today are going to include earthquake updates. What is about to hit California? New discoveries. Thank you, Patty M, for your chat cash with infinite love and gratitude. Um, new discoveries, elite falling to their deaths, and much more on this episode up to the tea time. On Saturday, the full moon brought in with it a tsunami wave of energy marking off the third and final energy shift cycle of 2022. If you were, and perhaps maybe you still are, feeling a little out of sorts, feeling emotional, experiencing even nausea. Maybe feeling pregnant, even if you're a guy, <laughs> feeling that nausea and things of that sort, and feeling out of sort. Um, I welcome you to the kickoff of our energy shift because that's what it was all about. That's what was happening. Even last week, I felt awful last week from like 
Thursday until yesterday was when when things eased up energetically a little bit, uh, a lot actually compared to right before we hit the full moon. And this hit before this 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 feeling and this heavy energy hit before. So if if perhaps you you are feeling that or are feeling that again, I welcome you to this energy shift. Symptoms began kicking in for sensitive folks, especially around Wednesday of last week. That was before we were hit even harder by that tsunami wave of energy on Saturday. Thankfully, the symptoms have eased up just a little bit yesterday and today. But I do warn you that this energy flow is like a roller coaster. Thank you. I truly am <laughs> uh, for your chat cash. With infinite love and gratitude. I missed that up there. Sorry. I missed it coming through. So anyway, th these energies are very much like a roller coaster in the way that there's ups and downs. And I believe without a doubt that there are going to be many drops in our energy levels by the end of this month, especially when we get close to the equinox. As I've been warning you, these energy shifts bring significant shifts in Mother Earth's plates, which brings with it major earthquake activity, storms, and this is all exactly what has been happening since Saturday's full moon. If you've been paying attention to the weather and to the Earth's plates and earthquakes, and the beginning of the shift marked off a lot of predictions that I made all happening. And I told you they always happen when we go into these energy shifts. Energy shifts that I, only I've been talking about for the past 10 years. And nobody else ever talks about the energy shift aspect that kicks in. So these shifts have a way of bringing out the crazy, if you haven't noticed that as well. But also bringing out truth. One simply cannot lie during these shifts. One simply cannot ignore whatever feelings or emotions are coming up either. Lies do not work and emotions come to the surface and ignoring them will make you really crazy minded and likely bring out some type of health issues by early October or November. If one ignores the emotions and suppresses them, then you're in, in for it. Don't want to do that. These shifts are all about bringing that up to help us bring healing and a new level uh, of consciousness to raise our, our conscious vibration, so to speak. So uh, don't ignore them. Even though these energy shifts usually don't have us feeling very fabulous most of the time, we got to remember that these are powerful and magical cycles, very powerful. And these cycles are here to help us to let go of and open up to new amazing possibilities in the future, both on personal levels and also on a universal level on our planet. So these cycles and these energy shifts went into effect back in 2011 and 2012 is when the energy shift aspects started. Uh, and that's when I started talking about them back in 2011. Because that's when spirit brought me that information. And they will continue to become more and more intense and significant to the future of humanity and all of us in the earth. This is also a time when the light warriors can get in many blows to the dark army of evil. Truth in itself is a very powerful weapon against those dark forces. And once again, these cycles bring out truth. That's always the fun part to see what kind of truths are being revealed. I haven't paid attention to the media. I usually don't. Um, just check in or what you all send me. So I would imagine some big things are going to blow over the next couple of days and over the next week. These shifts also bring out wisdom as well, which in turn brings out great ideas, inventions, and innovations. Something always to look forward to. So pay attention to your own thoughts, your own feelings, and any and all ideas that come to your mind. So that soon after this shift, you may reinvent yourself in your future as the shift is guaranteed to do for Mother Earth and all of humanity. As Mother Earth experiences another shift in her plates, she will also help to shift humanity into new level of consciousness. More people awaken during these short cycles than in any other time in between. So it's great for, for, for you know, waking up the sleepers, uh, these shifts. It's another thing that happens. But there will always be those that are resistant. Always, 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 as you know. It is inevitable that something huge is about to happen on our planet that will affect all of humanity moving forward into the future. Perhaps it is even more likely that several or many huge significant event, events are about to occur that will literally determine the direction of our future and where we go in the future. 
not only do we have this energy shift, but soon we're likely to be hit by sequences of solar flares that will indeed add to the awakening of humanity. There's also lingers a question of whether the recent earthquake that um, happened off of the coast of Papua New Guinea is the quake that I will unleash a series of earth events that I predicted months ago. So if you remember, months ago I said that there would be that earthquake exactly pretty much where it happened, and it would unleash a series of events. I also told you that that would start off with, with a tsunami warnings that wouldn't be a tsunami yet. So now we have to look for tsunami warnings in the future because now we're heading into that happening, unfortunately. And I'm going to work on more weather stuff in the future, so always keep an eye all the more reason to subscribe down below. There also, um, so that, that question lingers as well, but I lost my spot. Uh, but anyway, no matter what happens, I urge you all to stay strong, stay in love, stay in light. And soon after this intense energy shift, you too may experience a great new rebirth, especially when we get into October's new moon cycle. Uh, that's what it's all about, bringing us to the rebirth. So for October, it's going to be a highly, very spiritual, vibrational month and the great opportunity to awaken the senses on an even deeper level. With the goal, of course, of bringing us to this amazing rebirth. But you got to remember, you must be willing to look deep at yourself and within yourself in your life with the willingness to do the work that needs to be done. In turn, universe will greatly reward you. Remember that. And remember, that's what these shifts are all about. Um, they're not fun, but you know, hey, <laughs> sometimes the roller coaster will scare the hell out of you, but you want to get back on again, right? Well, I do anyway. I love roller coasters, but think of it that way. Uh, and you got to do the work. With work comes great rewards and great things. Speaking of great things, um, remember I said a while back that I was singing that song, London Bridge is Falling Down, and I did do a video last week on Wednesday when the Queen died. But if you remember, I said that when she would pass away, I mentioned that it would set off a series of huge events. And Spirit reminded me of that today. I didn't actually realize that till today. Uh, Spirit is good at reminding me when I need to be reminded. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit. But yes, a series of huge events. I'm not sure what all those huge events are going to be, but I'm sure they will align with some of my past predictions. Mmm, yummy hot tea. Spirit also said that the queen actually passed away days, almost a week before we were told she passed, which is kind of, I kind of figured that, but Spirit confirmed that today. Spirit also said that her soul was taken over by something dark back in the year 2012. I don't know what that's all about, but that's what I was told. And I go with what Spirit tells me because Spirit never lets me down. Did you also know this is very, very interesting in the timing? One minute after the full moon, which is also the full moon marked the beginning of this energy shift. But one minute after the full moon was the procl proclamation of King Charles. Isn't that fascinating? That goes to show in itself that that ain't going to last. <laughs> Stepping into a powerful position during a retrograde and an energy shift on top of it, on the full moon, to really throw in some, some shine on that, is heading for disaster. I mean, just astrologically, that's a disaster. And that wouldn't make sense when I learned about that. That would make even more sense of my predictions that that I, I Charles, is, I don't see him lasting long. I don't see, I see complete failure. I see people getting very upset in England with him. And I noticed um, they did that parade thing down, down the street or something. And I don't know if you saw it, but some somebody yelled so loud that you couldn't miss it. Uh, Charles drew a you're something, I forget what they called them, but it was kind of funny and total truth. But so loud that everybody heard. It's kind of interesting. Can't repeat really exactly what he said on, on the show, but you know, you go look at, at it. It was kind of funny. But it already shows that people are shouting negative things towards Charles already. It's already happening. He's not going to hold that key very long. That's for sure. Spirit also showed us last week that the Queen's death would also mark the beginning of several very significant deaths. That would also greatly affect countries and religion. 
So being that spirit said that it would affect religion, we can easily guess that one death that's coming in the near future would be that of a religious leader, likely the Pope. The Pope is not well. We already know that. I mean, I think everybody would know that, but without even being intuitive, he's not well. He hasn't been well for a while. But here's the interesting fact that that was really interesting that I discovered today. The Pope's birthday is December 13th. He is a Sagittarius. And he just so happens to be in his four personal year in numerology. The four year can, can bring people's health down, causes restrictions, holdbacks, a very big focus on the body, mind, and spirit. And then if, if we don't pay attention to that, by the time we get into that five vibration, you know, we can end up with major health issues, sometimes even in the four. And they get worse and worse if we don't deal with them. The Pope ain't no young man, that's for sure. So he's in a four year and Queen Elizabeth was in a four year and she just died. Except I thought Queen Elizabeth would die around her birthday. Actually, originally, I thought she died around her birthday. She made it to her birthday. See, I don't know if you ever realize this, but being a medium and having so many people I know that passed away in my life, uh, I noticed I, I noticed very clearly and significantly that many people die right before their birthday. Uh, my friend Vince died the day before his birthday. Um, because in astrology, your birthday marks off the um, your soul contracts. All those papers you signed before you came into this life, all those things that you agreed to before you came into this life, you signed, all are based on the astrological calendar. They're not based on the calendar that we follow, the Gregorian calendar, which was invented by Pope Gregory, I think, the second, to, to mess with the holidays related to the pagan holidays. Um, it's not even the right calendar. Even our ancestors used the solar and lunar calendars, not the Gregorian calendar. But your soul contracts are based on your birthday. So that's why people often pass right before or some close to before their birthdays. Some people make it a couple days after their per birthdays, and I think they're the ones that are just resistant and don't want to go. Uh, and they defy God's will for, for a short period of time. So beans, the Pope, December's coming up. Um, and now I think about it, December's his birthday, and that's the seven, and the seven's a highly spiritual vibrational number. Uh, so, I mean, it's likely that, that something could happen with the Pope in November uh, when he's in that sixth vibration. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily feel like it would be necessarily this year, but he's definitely on his way out. And 2023, I'd be shocked if he made it past that. And if he did, they'd be lying to us. Like seriously lying to us to keep the power. You notice last week I talked to you all about the Pope shifting everybody, all the money into the um, Vatican Bank, which was kind of shady and weird. And there's no explanation as to why he made this you know, demand. Uh, so something's going on there. And if you remember and you go back to my predictions 15 years ago, I, people didn't like it when I talked about the collapse of the Catholic Church. People told me I was crazy and then it started to happen. Uh, but I also said that the Pope that we had uh, was going to going to um, bail out or be pushed out. And then the Pope that came in after him would be the final Pope before the complete collapse of the church. Uh, well, that happened. Pope Benedict bailed out exactly as I said. And now we have that other Pope in there. Uh, will he be the final Pope before the complete collapse? I mean, I would imagine something's going to happen and someone's going to go in that place afterwards. But. It'll be interesting, something to keep a close eye on, because we are in that major, major time of major changes on the planet. I mean, look, the queen's death in itself marks off um, a, a big time of change. And she held that power for a very long time. Longer than anybody, actually, in history, come to think of it. Uh, but placing the Pope, thank you, Ma Mara. I need glasses, I can't see that. Mara, Mara. Ooh. Jeez, I got to go to an eye doctor sometime soon. I'm defiant. Um, so moving on to the next subject, social media murderers. <laughs> so and I know that's not really funny, but uh, you remember, I, I made this prediction a couple years ago when it happened about something being caught live on social media. But then recently, earlier this year, Spirit showed me that it would occur again, that somebody would be like a serial killer and would... Um, um, kill alive on social media. And um, I felt that it was likely going to be on Facebook. 
And that's exactly what happened, sadly, over the weekend that a, um, um, ser- a killer went on a rampage, and I believe it was Memphis. I'm pretty sure it was Memphis. Thank you, Mr. Skylight. Shining brightly, Mr. Skylight. Shining brightly. Um, what did you say? I didn't read that. You're over the target as always. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, the social media killer, that actually happened exactly as I said. But now, remember, I said that a serial killer would would do that. Um, but social media, likely Facebook. But sadly, this did not just occur in Memphis. Spirit told me today that this will bring about several copycats before the year end. Uh, and then one of these felt like... And I feel like this is probably something I got before because it felt like I had deja vu when I had this feeling that one of these reminds me of the movie Saul. I'm a horror movie buff, by the way. I love me some horror movies. Uh, I love all kinds of movies. But yeah, I mean, I've seen them all. And it reminded me of a feeling of Saul, um, like something like that. Meaning, and I, I can interpret that if spirit gives me that feeling. I can interpret that as not that it's exactly like the movie Saul, but what happened is Saul, it took them a long time to catch the person. That would be how I would relate my feeling of Saul to this event occurring potentially in the future. Hopefully it does not. Uh, moving on, I hate to be on the death. death. Um, thank you, Droney. Droney. Thank you, Droney. What'd you say? Great show. Thank you. I try. I work hard on this. Uh, Russian elite death. Did you hear about that one? Last week I talked about this. I think it was last week or the week before. Let me open this link up and read it to you. My computer is just not being my friend today. Why are you not opening? Ugh, it doesn't want to open, guys. It's not being my friend. I don't know what's, what the deal is. It is Mercury retrograde. Need I remind you? Oh, I hit the wrong button. Oh, Lordy. So, yeah, I, I, let me, as I'm trying to bring this up, oh, there it goes. Slow computer. It is raining, so that affects the internet here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I talked about the elite, and I talked about this over a year ago, maybe even two years ago, that I said that there would be an occurrence of, you know, elite socialites, you know, people that are high up in that elite circle starting to die off and being murdered and killed. Did, little did we think that it would start in Russia, uh, which is, and it's not just Russia. It's happened here too. What, what was it last week or week before? I forget who it was. Jumped out of a building in in in, Ara- in New York, I think it was, uh, the CFO of Bed Bath and Beyond. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, so I think that was last week or two weeks ago. But now, and then I talked about the oligarch that was also fell out of a hospital window last week. Here we go. Now my computer is deciding to work. Well, it just occurred again, as we knew it would. And it's going to continue to occur. But I got some good information about this one. So hold on tight. Um, this one's really interesting. This one's different. Russian energy executive dies after falling off a boat at full speed. Actually, energetically, the guy doesn't feel like a bad guy to me. Like, I mean, I'm, he's in the oil company, which is positive, but he doesn't feel like awful energy. He doesn't have awful energy to me. Uh, but it's not about that, and I'll tell you why in a minute. A Russian energy executive who worked under President Vladimir Putin has died after falling off a boat at full speed. Ivan Pechorin, 39 years old, was managing director of the Corporation for the Development of the Far East and the Arctic. And he died on Saturday near Rusky Island, around 5,800 miles east of Moscow. Um, the latest, uh, Pekorin, is the latest high-powered businessman to be mysteriously killed off since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th. Now, here's the interesting thing. You see how they throw that all out there? You see how they say Russia did it? And we believed it. I believed it at first, too. Yeah, it probably is them. No, it's not, Spirit said. That's what they want you to believe. See? Everything and not anything is the way you believe or think it is. And Spirit told me that a long time ago. I've shared that with you many times. Nothing is as it appears to be. Nothing. So we always have to look deeper and look from our heart, from our soul. 
Uh, and then we can see clearly and tap into that intuition because the intuition, we can tap into the heart, which taps into the intuition and, and the third eye and yada, yada, yada. Um, let me go back to my notes and tell you what Spirit told me today. It was sometime last year, actually, when I predicted there would be a drop off of members within the elite circle from various causes of death. Last week, I shared the story of a Russian elite falling to his death from a hospital room window. But is this something, but is this something just focused on Russian elite? No, definitely not. Maybe for now, but Spirit said not for long. And it can't be just for now because we had the CFO, Beds, Bass, and Beyond that leaped out a window. I believe it was thrown out a window, but whatever. Uh, unfortunately, Spirit says it will not include some of the elite that people may wish to see perish. <laughs> so sorry to break the news to you, y'all. Spirit said, uh, unfortunately, it won't won't include some of the elite. It didn't say it wouldn't include any of them. It said it wouldn't include some of the elite that many people may wish to see this happen to. So we know who they're talking about. We're talking about Mr. B, Mr. G, uh, you know, Rothschild, all those, those sickos. And Spirit said, at least not this year. Not this year. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Uh, but not this year. At the same time this is happening and clearly shows the light is posing an attack on the elite who control parts of the dark energies that keep us suppressed and enslaved. Soon we will see this occur in America and Australia. One elite death will be related to a crash of a private jet into the waters. When I saw this today, it reminded me of the, you know, the video clips of JFK Jr.'s death. And when his plane crashed, allegedly. So perhaps near the coast or the water is what I was feeling. But it is not Putin. It is the dark army taking out oil executives. They're doing it on purpose. So somehow, again, the light's always working here. The light is always working in some mysterious way. But at the same time, it's really the ones that are physically doing the killing are people within that dark army, you know, the army of darkness, the evil ones. Now, it's not particularly, again, Spirit said it's not specifically in straight up Putin. Um, not saying he's not responsible for one or two of them in Russia, but he's not responsible for the whole circle. This is them, the dark army, trying to take out oil and energy. Next thing you know, you're going to start seeing power company executives drop off like flies. Uh, you know, they own big, big power companies because right now they're hitting oil. Uh, and we haven't seen it over here yet. But your spirit said, again, America and United States and also Canada. Um, I mean, Australia, United States and now Canada pops in my mind. So keep an eye on your elite in those those countries and those areas coming up in the near future. But pay attention, because if you notice, they're all executives. Of, I don't know why Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know what that's about. What else they own? I, I, would, I don't have time to go down that rabbit hole. It would be interesting, though, wouldn't it? Uh, but y'all can leave comments down below because I always love to hear what you have to say. Uh, and speaking things, we're on the subject of Russia, Russia, Russia. Let me tell you about this one. I thought this was interesting. Very interesting, too. Russian aircraft detected in North American air defense identification zone. The Russian aircraft did not enter American sovereign airspace. Two Russian Maritime patrol aircraft were detected and tracked off the coast of Alaska in Canada on Sunday, September 11th. What a day, right? We know about those numbers. I told you about those numbers and those dates, 11, 22, the 29th, uh, all those big numbers. And I got some dates for you too, because I know some of you are asking questions about a particular date. I will talk about that. You just got to hang out with me, have some patience, and chill, grab some tea, grab a drink, smoke some weed, whatever makes you happy. If you're happy, other people are happy too. Hey, I'm going to stick to my hot tea. That's now staying hot, thanks to this wonderful gift somebody sent me that I'll talk about later too. The aircraft entered and operated in the Alaskan and Canadian air defense identification zones, but did not enter American sovereign airspace, according to the North American Aerospace Defense Command. So Russia's been, known, been doing this lately. Uh, pushing, pushing the curb, you know, pushing, pushing, just pushing in general. Russia is testing the United States, is what Spirit told me today, 
and the states is losing at the test. Of course they are. Look at who's running it. A puppet. Russia will continue to see how far they can push into other countries' airspace. Not just us, but or America, but soon they may test the wrong country who may likely end up shooting a Russian plane from their airspace. That was over that was over around Europe or, or Middle East is where I saw that. It's a potential. You know, they're thinking about it. So if Russia actually does do it, they're going to get shot down. They're going to mess with the wrong people. They're going to be warring, Spirit says. And the third warning is not going to be a warning. It's going to be uh, them shooting them out of the sky with all the right to do so. So it'll be interesting to see if that plays out. You know, it's not completely written yet, but, but it's being thought of, which usually means it will be written. I said it before and I'll say it again. Putin and Russia are about to make some very bold, desperate moves that are going to benefit Russia. Uh, and big moves, big things, scary things. Remember, the, uh, if you look back, this just popped in my mind, actually. Um, this is why it's good to do this live all the time, because I get more information and things pop up in my mind. And it popped up in my mind. Remember the visions I had of the um, mushroom cloud? Something being ignited like that. Not saying necessarily nuclear, but pretty close to it because it was a mushroom cloud. That vision just popped in my brain again. So I'm thinking maybe that's the bold move coming out of Russia or related to this whole thing. We will have to wait and see. Uh, and I have in my notes, but I didn't put any information about that. Rapper PNB, I don't even know who that is uh, because I don't follow that um, genre, genre, was fatally shot in an L.A. restaurant. So again, not a member of the elite. I don't know if he's the elite. I doubt it, but, but, but it could be. But regardless, it's the whole energy. And it's all about L.A. And L.A. is going to become a shooting war zone, is what Spirit just said to me. I'm writing this in my notes. Because these notes I publish eventually on my subscribe star to my supporters there. And I just posted a whole bunch of um past shows notes you know and again more stuff comes through that aren't in my notes when i do live but if you're interested in notes become a level two or higher supporter on subscribe star and you will get to see all the notes that, that, that's not an invitation for these other psychics to go on and steal my stuff by the way even though they will anyway uh but this is again talking about high uh rapper pnb fatally shot also brings into into mind uh, a lot of high-profile killings and deaths coming up uh, that Spirit talked about a while ago. And I think he's moving more into 2023, but we're going to see a lot of legends begin to pass away. Big, again, Queen, the Queen's death, as Spirit said, it's going to kick off a series of major, major world events and deaths of other leaders. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, this is an interesting one. I try to get some, try to mix in good stuff and positive stuff because I don't want y'all to be doomed and gloomed because, you know, but here's the thing. Being aware helps us to prepare, as you know. When you are aware of certain things, you can be prepared to a certain extent. So that's why. And then at the same time, together, we can hold things in the light and we can shift future events from happening. You know, being aware of things, that's why a lot of people's pages and things and videos get taken down. Because they're putting out information that they don't want you to prepare or know about so that you don't have the ability to shift the direction it ends up in. So think about that. Uh, we are in charge of our future. Drought reveals, and I remember I said this about um, um, like bodies that were showing up in Lake Mead. I got information about that and you know finding a serial killer and other things showing up. But this set off... This article set off more information I got today about droughts and things showing up when they dry out. A drought revealed a Wild West ghost town in California. That's right. In California, where usually there's no water, where there's usually water, there are now exposed foundations from the bygone era. At California's Lake Isabella. A dry spell has caused a man-made lake to divulge what lies beneath, the long, sunken town of Whiskey Flat. After World War II in the early 1950s, the U.S. government dammed the area and built a reservoir, blowing up most of the abandoned town and leaving only the exploded foundations of the general store, jail, and the Methodist church there. 
structures that are now visibly poke up from the empty lake's bottom. I thought that was kind of interesting. Have you ever been to an old Wild West town? I have. Of course I have. With my horse. No. Um, but yeah, there's one here. What is it called? Tombstone, Arizona. Awesome. If you ever come to Arizona and you like Old West stuff, go to Tombstone. It's pretty darn cool. It's really, it's really neat. Very haunted, too. Um, so uh, I made some past predictions revolved around bodies and such showing up after drought waters recede. In California, parts of the Old West town show up, but soon we are going to see some amazing discoveries. Not all just from waters receding either. Some discoveries will be from waters being low enough for archaeologists and underwater divers to actually unearth several ancient shipwrecks, along with new discoveries from beneath the waters near Egypt. Ancient Egypt, shocking discoveries are coming. This, and I don't know what that means, ancient Egyptian shocking um, um, discoveries. So that'll be interesting. I am infatuated by ancient Egypt. You can't see, but over here I have uh, some ancient Egyptian artifacts that I've gathered or collected over the years that mean so much to me. Uh, but anyway, this is going to include new discoveries that come along, especially around Egypt, like I said. New discoveries from beneath the waters near Egypt. I don't know if this even includes a shipwreck because I got that right before and then I was told ancient Egypt shocking discoveries are coming. This will include several new discoveries along the Nile in Egypt when the waters there begin to recede even more and some waters even being cut off completely along the Nile. So our folks over there in Egypt and along the Nile, Spirit showed me today that some of these I guess it branches out kind of like creeks run to rivers and rivers run to oceans. I don't know what branches out from the Nile, uh, but Spirit's shown some of it's going to dry out completely. Like they're cutting it off. Spirit said cut off completely. So if they're cutting it off, I'm, I'm feeling like they're, put, they're blocking it, that Nile from going to different places, which chances are is going to feed into my predictions from New Year's Day about the water wars that are coming. They're already starting. But, you know, go back to my New Year's Day predictions. That's where I thorough, thorough show there. Let's talk about monkeys. Let's talk about monkeys. <laughs> uh, really, let's talk about the monkey bug for a minute. Because monkeypox death confirmed by L.A. County health officials. When was this put out? September 13th. Today. A Los Angeles County resident with a compromised immune system has died from the monkey bug. Local health officials announced on Monday, it is believed to be the first U.S. fatality from this disease. The Los Angeles County Department of Public Health announced the cause of death, and a spokesperson said it was confirmed by an autopsy. The patient was severely immune compromised. There you go, right there, my friends. Severely immune compromised and had been hospitalized. No other information on this person was released. Of course it wasn't. Maybe this person don't exist. Maybe they do. But if they don't release any information, how do we know? There's no validation. Do we have to believe everything they tell us? Don't believe everything they tell you, my friends. You should know that by now. Don't believe everything you read on the internet either. You should know that by now. Uh, but I thought this was interesting because you know they're pushing the agenda there. Um, I thought I had information about bugs. I talked a lot about bugs last week. Um, and I think I have more in my notes further down. But let us move on to the next next article that I thought was very interesting. And for y'all that are new here, we do that. We look at articles and stories that align with predictions and get more information and so forth. Why is it taking me to the same monkey bug? Ah, I didn't. I put the wrong link in. Darn. Uh, Twitter whistleblower testifies. That was the link that was supposed to go there, and I don't have the link to share with you. But I'm sure you can find it very easily if you look online that apparently a Twitter whistleblower is testifying in Congress or something, which I just, spirit laughs. I hear giggles like that's a joke, meaning that that's a complete joke. Uh, they're not a real whistleblower is what, what spirit makes me feel. But, you know, I told you Twitter is going to fall. So is Facebook. But, but they're fall, They're going to fall. Trickle, 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 trickle. As a part of our new great, great new earth, we can't have those things. 
Um, there's too much negative vibrations radiating from both of those specifically. Um, Facebook and, and Twitter, those two. So I think it's interesting. But this also aligns with predictions about major whistleblowers coming out. So I don't know. I don't feel like this is all true, first of all. But I did say that the major whistleblower, I don't remember the exact prediction. You'd have to go back and listen. It was a while ago. I talked about like big whistleblowers coming out. This would be a time right now during an energy shift, you know? So if this person testifies, some kind of truth is going to come out. Something, you know, especially if these hearings are happening now during the energy shift, like the, the truth is going to come out. You're not going to be able to lie. You're not going to be able to get out of it. You can't do that during an energy shift. It just doesn't float. I can't wait till it just doesn't float anymore at all. Like just lies don't work anymore. That, we will get to that. Um, yeah, what did happen to Julian Assange? He kind of disappeared, didn't he? You know, there's an Illuminati card on him. Uh, so that's interesting as well. I, I, that's the one thing I forgot about, my Illuminati cards. I haven't looked at them or did anything with them in a while. I got I to do something with them. That's, that's a good thing to put in my brain for future video. I got I to acquire more cards, though. I'd like to get all of them eventually. Uh, moving on to strikes. You're out. <laughs> strikes. Remember I talked about massive strikes happening and people getting their power back and stepping into their power? Well, railroad strike negotiations are held up by a battle over sick time policies. Um, the biggest the biggest sticking points remaining in critical contract talks between U.S. railroads and labor unions. The top labor negotiator in talks to avert a railroad strike accused BNSF and Union Pacific of holding up progress. Sure, lots of lies, lots of things. But here's the thing. Let me go back to my notes. I warned you of massive strikes and people fighting to take back their power. Now, not only that, but we are also all aware of the dark agenda of cutting off our food supplies and even water. And if you have not watched my uh, Game of Hunger, ga yeah, Games of Hunger video that I did a couple, month or so ago, you got to watch that video. It's of the utmost importance. Although I'm doing another one tomorrow live. So you're going to want to tune in tomorrow live around the same time. I'm putting together a critical video of, of evidence, basically stuff you need to see so that you can prepare. But we know, like, um, uh, we just know. We know what they're doing. Sickos. Therefore, a strike on railroad workers sounds like it could be a planned event by the event by the Dark Army, right? Hmm, anything else? Cut us off of food even more. Anything to affect food supplies has been happening for over a year now. Like burning down of food suppliers and warehouses. Yeah, that's part of what my game of, Games of Hunger video is all about. Uh, so, is this the next step in their plan of the Dark, dark Army? To cut off shipping, to, to cut off shipping supplies and, and, and things through the railroad system. It already happened. We know about the train wreck that I told you would happen up near Canada that would block off a major route. That happened. It stopped things from getting across for a while. Um, so it already happened to imports, you know, with the shipping, you know, all the, um, um, you know, cargo that's out on sea and all that. We know about that. We know about the big truckers and the truckers trying to fight to get their power back. Now an attack from the inside of our own countries, because, you know, that was all like more the outer, stopping stuff from getting in the country, but now they want to stop stuff from moving through the country. Think about that. Think about that very strong, my friends. You know, they worked really hard to stop things from getting into the countries through, through the ports and all that. Uh, now they're really going after moving products through the country. Think about that. Uh, now an attack from the inside on our own countries that would be the next step. Stop food from getting to people. So railroad strikes, trucker strikes, and even a problem coming with shipping through air freight. So all these things are yet to come. They are hitting farmers, like the Amish organic farmer, if you knew about that story. I talked about that about two or three weeks ago. And local farmers. So support your local farms, my friends. Try to get farm grown. Go, you know, if you have a um, farmer's market or something, we have one in Sedona uh, on Sundays. But if you got one of them, go, folks. You got to support them. Um, but 
We have not seen anything yet, is what Spirit told me today, in comparison to what's to come in 2023. I don't know exactly what all that means. I have a really darn good idea. But let's get out of 2022 first. Uh, I will be doing sometime, probably in October, uh, 2023 preview video of predictions. You know, some major, you know, top 10 predictions for 2023. I'm putting them out earlier this year. I will do my New Year's show like I always do, but I've been filled to, to, to tell people about 2023. So I will, it is on my list. Um, and speaking of, so yeah, be aware of that. Yes, there are going to be strikes. Teacher strikes, city strikes, even government worker strikes is what Spirit just showed me. I don't know what government, but it feels like United States. So what the heck is Biden going to do next to cause federal workers to go pick it? Mm, God, please help us. New York officials are investigating the drowning of three deaths of three children on the Brooklyn beach. Authorities are investigating the deaths of three children who were found unresponsive along a New York City shoreline early Monday after a family member reported concerns about their safety. Seven-year-old, four-year-old, and a three-and-a-half-month-old, or a three-and-a-half-month-year-old yeah, girl were found at Brooklyn's Coney Island. That's very sad. But I got information not about that, but about the water swallowing people up. Um, Spirit showed me today that the waters, this is going to become common ground as the oceans start churning, especially like in the United States on the East Coast shoreline. So, you know, keep your kids away from them waters or, or be safe in those waters between now and, and the next couple of weeks. Then it'll be too cold to go in the water anyway. Um, so I would expect that even in the Florida waters to be careful and, and coming shark attack off the coast of Florida as well. Um, but the ocean swallowing up people and spitting them out is what Spirit told me. Um, and we don't see it, but it's going to start to occur. So that means in turn, you're going to see a lot of boat incidents happening in the near future too, uh, including a shipwreck. Big. I talked about that with cruise lines or ships uh, sometime in the past month as well. I don't remember exactly what I said. Uh, but another thing, too, did you know about the new tracking that they're trying to do on, with guns, with UPS and new rules and regulations? Yeah, they're coming for your guns, man. They're coming for your guns. Let's talk about weather. <laughs> that was a good switch, wasn't it? Ah, the quiet before the solstice storms hit. Not just the solstice, but the equinox. But we got a lot happening towards the end of the year, right? Right around holidays time from the 20, 20 Actually, probably from the 20th till the end of the year. I'll talk more about that, of course, in the future. But um, but this is also quiet before the equinox storms. You know, I tell you, during, especially when we have an equinox in the middle of an energy shift, or not in the middle of it, but during an energy shift, it actually ends off the energy shift pretty, much, pretty close to it. Uh, we're in the energy shift till October 1st, I believe, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. And actually, no, I don't even think it's that far. Uh, whenever the new moon is, what, 26 maybe? I'll tell you right now. I will tell you right now. If my computer would go just a little bit faster. October, I mean, September, yeah, 25th, September 25th it ends. But again, we have equinox three days before that. So we have equinox on the 22nd, my birthday. And then we have... One, two more days left of the energy shift after that because the new moon marks, ends it to complete. And the new moon is at 2.54 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on Sunday the 25th. Something to keep in mind. But speaking of weather, mega outages are coming for California. And Spirit said mega outages, like mega, mega, mega outages. Um, some because they are already, my friend was just visiting from California and she said that they were like barely ever had power, that they keep like doing roll out power, pow, rolling power outages, you know, as part of their system. Now I told you that was going to happen. Did I not? And where she lives? Sarasota. I forget where she lives. I just drew a blank, but in California, um, that's what she said. Like they have no power at nighttime. Like it's crazy. And I told you they were going to do that rolling blackouts, rolling blackouts. And that's just there. Wait, wait until next year. It's going to get worse during the summertime anyway. 
Um, people are going to become very used to the heat very quickly. But mega outages in California and some ending up, some people's power being out for weeks, said Spirit today. Weeks. I would think that would have to be storm related or the hack. Remember, I told you there was going to be a alleged hack, a, a, a flag that falls that flies falsely, you know, a flag that flies fa falsely, say that three times fast, uh, hack that I predicted in the past. It could be related to that. But this is California. And a large flood event is coming to California as well. A large flood event. So California is going to get quite the shaking. Um, the whole planet is, but especially California. Not only um, are we in for more earthquake activity, but soon parts of the globe will experience record-breaking earthquake activity, along with floods hitting drought-stricken areas especially, with flooding that's going to be unprecedented. This is coming, like now. This is, we're in the now with this prediction, so you know. Spirit says that Japan, our friends in Japan, are in for a ride, which coincides with some of my past predictions as well. Russia will be hit good. And this is, I'm still talking earthquakes here. Russia will be hit good along with Pakistan and Iran in both the southern and northern California areas being hit by earthquakes. Significant ones. Uh, remember my past prediction about the East Coast of the United States, too, and now Spirit reminded me that today of, of activity now beginning to heighten with earthquakes when it comes to, to um, what I said. I said New York City, I believe, was one of them. Um, but now Spirit also says that this heightened activity uh, really is going to be the beginning of what comes between Australia and New Zealand. You remember, y'all, I know y'all remember to watch all the time that I pointed right to that area and said right in between New Zealand and, and um, Australia would be this big quake and then Papua New Guinea came up. Well, now it happened. And I'm pretty sure that was a 7.6, my friends. That's not little. That's pretty darn big. I remember I had the visions of the, the, the islands crushing into the water, crashing into the waters. That's the Solomon Islands. That's coming. Maybe parts of Papua New Guinea, too, but they're pretty close together, I, I think. Geographically challenged, but I think they're pretty close together. Same area. I'm pretty sure they're the same area. But regardless, um, Spirit says it's going to heighten in that area between Australia and New Zealand. Even Ireland and our friends in Ireland will receive a small quake in, a, in an area that's unfelt. You know, an unfelt area, area where that doesn't happen. But there's going to be no area where that doesn't happen anymore. Like, just get, 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 get ready. Don't matter where you live. Temperatures are about to drop on the East Coast. But another heat will come in before fall officially kicks in. That's the East Coast of the United States and Canada. Uh, be on alert for major snowstorms hitting areas around and shortly after this coming autumn equinox. I'm like, really? Really, Spirit? But if you remember, I just said that recently in the past month, that, that there would be like record uh, snow as far as timing and snow hitting places that don't hit in September and October. So and this isn't just in the United States. This is just in general. Um, but... It's going to be interesting. In the United States, I see flooding occurring all over the country, of course, but in places that include Philadelphia, New York, and New York City. Upper New York, I saw upper New York, like um, outside of Buffalo or that, that area, I saw massive flooding, but also around New York City. Massachusetts and the Cape, uh, the Cape of Massachusetts, getting battered. I mean, battered, big floods and floods that are going to head all the way up into Mass Western Massachusetts as well. And of course, Maine. Um, some of that might touch, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, um, but not much. It, it, the storms feel lower to me that are coming lower on the map. Um, but more floodings coming to south, to, to the south of the United States, the Carolinas, Alabama, Kentucky, and Virginia. Texas, remember I said Dallas was going to be underwater, and Dallas went underwater recently. The Spirit said Texas was a, 
Texas is going to get hit again. And remember what I said about Texas being a targeted state? Remember Spirit gave me that feeling like with weather modification and all that that was a targeted state. We know how they froze them out, you know, last year or not that long ago. I think it was last year, right? Um, our friends in Texas. And soon Florida will also join the hit as far as targeted states. <laughs> so you know, be safe out there, folks. Flooding and landslides will hit both coastal areas of Canada, both coasts, both sides of Canada. Flooding and landslides. Be safe, our Canadian friends. Italy is in for some huge weather events that will run off into Greece. And I, I stopped there, and now I look at it, and that was one of the points I forgot. I was going to pull up the map and look at the map, and I totally forgot to do that. Um, so I'll have to do that for the next time. In the past, I predicted Yellowstone National Park would endure closures, which it did. But then Spirit said there would be more to come. Well, part of Yellowstone Park has just been closed off. Part of it, not all, but part of it. But soon, Spirit said, larger part will get closed down. I see a significant bridge being washed away by flood or even a mudslide of some sort that will affect part of Yellowstone Park and will affect it for up to two years. So I don't know anything about bridges or anything about Yellowstone, but apparently there's going to be a slide or a flood in slide that takes out a bridge and it's going to be out for two years. Um, Yellowstone Park. September 25th is the new moon. Oh, I have it in my notes. I didn't have to look at the calendar. <laughs> uh, making September 24th the final day of the energy shift. Energy shifts always go out with a bang. Boom. Every time. So people have been asking me about the date the 24th. Apparently somebody or some, there's something out there, you know, which of course they'll say is conspiracy theory. Um, but something about the 24th, I don't know who said it or where it came from, but people have commented in the comments asking me about the 24th. Spirit didn't say anything to me about the 24th, but I looked at the dates today and I'm like, the 24th is the last day of the energy shift. Of course something could happen. It's, it's the end of the energy shift. But that whole time period, let me pull up my calendar again real quick. That whole time period, like now especially, but when we get to the 21st, maybe even the 20th, but next week, you know, the 21st, the 22nd is the equinox, fall equinox, autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere, winter equinox, or not winter equinox, um, spring equinox, right? Yeah, spring equinox in the southern hemisphere. So that's going to bring in some intense energies because we're in that energy shift at the same time of an equinox. And it's the last days of the energy shift. So I'd say pay attention from the 20th all the way to the 25th. Uh, 25th is renewal. But of course, you know, darkness knows all about these cycles. If I know about them and I talk about them, the darkness knows about them. No doubt about it. And they follow these cycles. They follow those dates. Now, if I were to intuitively pick a date uh, and say, you know, which date, I would pick the 22nd, actually, more than anything, as far as the energy shift. But again, the 29th as well. Uh, but let's uh, see what my notes say. To answer people's questions about September 24th, it is inevitable that every energy shift goes out with a bang. So therefore, the dates from the equinox on the 22nd leading up to the 25th new moon will be a huge significant timeline in 2022. Perhaps the most significant timeline of all. So um, the 22nd to the 25th. I say the 20th because I felt 20th on, but in my notes, I have the 22nd to the 25th. September 30th also dropped, even though that whole 29 thing, so it could be the 29th and the 30th, but September 30th just kind of jumped out at me today. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Maybe by next week, I'll get more information or something to provide for you. Spirit showed me visions that a breakout of alligator attacks is coming to Florida. I thought that was an odd one. I'm like, really? That's kind of odd. <laughs> it's kind of odd. Uh, a breakout of gator attacks coming to Florida and Texas. So, you know, and this is all I said, be aware so you can prepare. So now that you're aware, if you're in Texas or going to Texas or Florida, please, folks, be aware of the gators because they will mess your day up. They might end your day. So um, now there is a rumor, and uh, we tried to confirm it, but we couldn't really confirm that Mexico called martial law. And every time, everything I looked up about it said that, that happened in 1972. <laughs> Apparently, somebody did a video on YouTube about it. A couple people now, by this point, 
but I can't confirm it. So I, I looked, I searched, I couldn't find anything about it. Um, so I'm going to say that maybe it hasn't really quite happened or it could have, and maybe they're suppressing it from media, but, um, I don't know. Yeah. But I can tell you that what spirit did tell me though. And remember, I, I don't remember this, but spirit says it's in past prediction. Some of it that, um, Mexico is about to go to war. They're already at war. Actually, they're at war with themselves and the cartel. And I told you about the cartel and things. They're all connected to the elite, by the way. So, you know, all that circle and all those that fly on Epstein's plane. Yeah, the cartel, they're all connected. They're all connected. They're also connected to the CIA as well. Don't be surprised. There are, are dark people in very high places on this planet. Uh, and Mexico's at war, but they're about to go to war. And I don't know what spirit means by that. They're at war, but about to go to war big time. I know that something happened. We did look, do a little search with my friends on Zoom before we started from, from Awaken Your Spirit community. And I forget what um, Cephas said. I think he said something about calling out the National Guard or something in, in Mexico. Uh, so that's a big deal. Or taking over the National Guard, the government or something like that. So big things are about to shift and happen in Mexico and lots of um, not so good things. Because now Spirit shows me cartel fighting back by like, setting off explosions and blowing up public places or government buildings uh, to a point that they're going to have to barricade cities in to keep uh, keep people safe they're going to have to build walls within mexico like a wall around mexico city or just as an example but spirit show me that they're going to have to literally barricade themselves in to be safe it's going to be an all-out war but Spirit also says that the good that lies within Mexico can potentially win this war. So that's a good thing to know, right? That they could win. The light can always win when they're focused and the light comes together, right? Global food production is about to drop greatly. This is um, aligns with my predictions. If you look back at my predictions a couple years ago, I had visions of the Great Depression, like the pictures that we see, the black and white pictures, of people lined up for food and all. I've been saying this for years, my friends. I've been saying it since 2019, maybe even 2018, that, that, that it was going to come. And probably 2018, yeah, 2018, 2019, because it usually sometimes takes three years for some of my predictions to come into fruition, like my New Year's predictions that I do every year on New Year's Day. Uh, and that would be about right. Three years, we see it happening. It's already happening, coming into fruition. So what's that all about? Tomorrow, again, I'm going to go live and I'm going to give you great details about truth and what you need to know and a final urge for you to prepare you and your family to be safe. Winter's coming, folks, and it's going to be a damn cold winter. They're going to do everything with their weather modification to freeze people out in certain areas. Not everywhere. Again, some places are going to be hotter than normal. Some places are going to have a mild winter. And I'll, I'll hone in on that in early October. Uh, I'll do something weather-wise early October. I get weather stuff every week. Thank you, Mara. Uh, yeah, but I'll do something focused specifically on weather. Probably not until October. Because next week is my birthday. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. And I always take off right before and right after my birthday. It's important. Your birthday is the most powerful day of the year, and you must utilize it in a good way and in a ceremonial way. So um, next week, I'm still up in the air because I always take off two days before and two days after and the day of my birthday, five days minimum, usually a week, but just time I can't do a week. Um, and so birthday's Thursday. So I'd like to have off Tuesday and Wednesday and then Friday and Saturday. But so... Either I will be here live next week, as usual. If not, I will have a live premiere. It'll be one or the other. I will not leave you down on a Tuesday. I will be here on Tuesday one way or another. Whether it's in the chat room chatting with you for a live premiere or whether it's this live. One or the other. See, I'm, I'm thinking maybe doing a top predictions and, and recording ahead of time. Find time to record it ahead of time. Upload it and, and do a premiere. I'm not sure, but that's what's going on next week. Tomorrow... Again, I'll be back live with another piece for you. Um, oh, I got a couple other things in my notes. Israel just has this new law they passed around romantic relationships uh, with Palestine, Palestinian people. So Israel, again, passing a new law 
uh, based around any Israel, any um, Israelis that are in romantic relationships with Palestinians. Not good rules either. It's a, another part of enslavement. It's another part of saying you can't do that, so we're going to make it hard for you to do that. We're going to make your life miserable if you do that. Uh, I just thought that was interesting. Another thing of enslavement. So whoever is, I don't know who's in charge over there now, because I don't pay attention to that. I, I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not Netan, not Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo, he, yeah, he's Yahoo, all right. Um, but that would show right away that good does not prevail in Israel yet if they're passing laws like that. It's another way of enslaving people. And last but least, I've got mail. And maybe more information. So cool, check this out. I got this very cool mug that actually fits perfectly on this very cool, very hot actually, um, coffee warmer. And my mug didn't fit on there, but it just so happened that somebody else, so, so Sandra G sent me this. Thank you, Sandra, I love you. Beautiful card that went with it. I'll show you in a moment. But then somebody else, which I have here, I need to read it. I can't, I should have brought my glasses. Didn't I bring my glasses? There's my grandpa glasses. Hello, Shani. Hello, Shani. Um, this was, oh, it isn't on here. Darn. Ah, oh, shoot. Here, let's just go through them all one at a time. Mary F. in Sarasota, Florida. Sent me a beautiful card, if I can find it right here. This card is so gorgeous. Look at how beautiful that card is. It's a puffy card, like puffs out. And she uh, included a very lovely gift inside. And Joseph, we wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Love, Mary and Pam. As always, saying thank you, we wanted to send you a little appreciation for all of the hard work and your abilities being able to bring forth prophecy and predictions. We appreciate you. Oh, I love and appreciate you girls. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mary and Pam. I love this card, by the way. It's a cool card. Very, very cool card. My friend and my student, Tommy. Where'd your card go, to uh, Tommy? Um, this is it. Uh, this is the card from Sandra that sent me the warmer. Ah, uh, thank you. To help keep your tea warm during Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time with JT, Sandra G. Thank you, Sandra G. And you know what? It actually works. It's really hot. This is still hot. And this mug that someone else sent me, if I could find the slip for it, I'll be really upset if I don't have my slip. I just thought I put it on here, but I don't see who it was. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. Is that it? Ah, yeah, there it is. Thank you for everything you do for us. Much love, Jackie from Rhode Island. Thank you, Jackie from Rhode Island. This mug works perfect on my warmer. Perfectly, perfectly on my warmer. All right. Got something else here. If I can find it. Oh my God, I grabbed everything and ran. Look at this card. It's so funny. This card is so darn cute. Look at that card. It's a roller coaster <laughs> with all the animals on it. You know, a couple of years ago, right before I moved across country, I, I drug all, I went out and bought tickets for everybody I knew that I loved and adored to go to Great Adventure. And we went and rode the roller coasters, a whole group of us. It was great. Um, hope your birthday is wild from start to finish. Wishing you birthday is a magnificent as you are. All the best to you. Love and gratitude, Beth. That's awesome, Beth. Thank you. And Beth had left a little gift in there as well. My mama says, dumb matters, the thought that counts. That's all that matters, the thought that counts. Um, and this beautiful thank you card from, I can't even read that. Oh, my Lord, can you read that? I can't read that. My signature, but I have it here somewhere. Is that Mary? I think that was Mary sent me that one. And... Oh, the, the, oh, that's right. Beth, it wasn't Beth. It was Billy Na, B, Billy K. Sorry, Billy. Billy, my student. And, and, and we miss you, Billy. We haven't seen you in forever. Uh, Billy sent me to Roller Coaster One. That's the coolest car. That's really cute. I love roller coasters. And it's got all the doggies riding it. And I think I concluded my mail for today. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but maybe not. 
This is Mary from Sarasota, Florida. I said that already. I think I got them all. I think I got them all. And I think I love hanging out with you every Tuesday. Thank you, Jillian, girl. You are amazing, Jillian. You are amazing. Um, and anybody else that I missed that may have put through chat cash or anything of the sort, I couldn't do this without you. I love each and every one of you. Remember, I will be back tomorrow. Um, so mark your calendars, mark your clocks. I'm not sure what time, but probably the same time in the evening. Uh, important information. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button, my friends. And check out my newsletters down below. Subscribe to that newsletter. You're going to want to do that so that you're on top of what's going on in, in my world. Until then, until the next time, I love you all for hanging out with me and passing on this information and being a part of the tribe by hitting that subscribe. You can also join the community down below as well. So no matter what it is, I'm glad you're here. That's the most important. And I hope to see you again in the future. I know I'll see many of you in the future because I see it in my crystal ball. <laughs> but remember to um, celebrate life, celebrate you, be kind to others as you wish others to be kind to you because we all know mean people, yeah, they suck. Love you all lots. Have a beautiful rest of your day and a namaste. Till the next time, much love.